Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Starseed Chats. I am Lily Nova. Let me add our names down here. Okay, and then I have Alexis Rose here with me, which um, I met Alexis briefly at the SSP conference. She um, she manages Ascension Diaries on Instagram and on YouTube, and she is really into tracking like space weather and solar energy. So I thought it'd be cool to have her on. And she lives in Sedona, I just found out. So she's got some cool things to uh, share with us on that too. How's everybody doing? <laughs> yes. How are you doing, Alexis? Thank you for having me. It looks like people are having a great time already piling in. We're looking forward to today's chat. It's nice to see you again. And we're finally getting to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's funny how our past kind of looked very similar around that <laughs> that conference yeah. and now we're just well on our way on with that little extra nudge I would say so mm -hmm. <laughs> the nudges keep coming though and this I study all the nudges out of the sun also because it's basically the same experience but less physically abrasive as it can happen here as we mm -hmm. you know fall and get in crashes and stuff here on earth silly things mm -hmm. but the yeah. solar explosions is a huge piece of what I love because basically the whole spiritual community is convinced we're going through some sort of energetic charge and an upliftment of consciousness. And so I tried to study that with the solar cycles and it's working really well. It's also helping with people who have chronic illness or are empaths and are, or healers in a way too. So it's been universally accepted by so many people in our community. And I've just, I've nestled myself in a really nice niche to be of service. So mm -hmm. yeah, I take every chance I get to like make new friends and talk about it. So nice to meet you guys. Yeah, no, yeah, that's awesome. Um, I haven't, I don't, not many people like are doing what you're doing with the, uh, you know, tracking all of that stuff. So it's really cool to kind of, and it fits right into what's going on. But I'll have to ask you. Um, so I've had okay. a lot of people asking me about, you know, and actually before, before we get started real quick, before I forget, okay. if you guys are interested in trying CBD, I've partnered with Hopewell Farm CBD that uh, it's a star seed couple. They have really great quality CBD oil. And you can get 10% off with code Lily10 in the description. And if you guys are interested in Starseed merch, I, I'm having a lot of fun designing a lot of uh, Starseed merch. I've added a bunch of new products, um, UFO, <laughs> Starseed mugs, cups. We've got hoodies, and these things are turning heads. Like I've worn <laughs> this hoodie out in public a few times, and people are like, <laughs> they're like that's really cool and they want one so i think it's a good way to just spread the word i also have the star origins um lyra pleiadian uh pleiadian syrian all of that fun stuff it's so fun if you guys yeah, yeah it's it's been fun so if you guys are interested in star seed merch you can also get that at lilynovaspaceart.com makes a really good gift okay now on to the interview <laughs> get your merch everybody star seeds what are you doing faking it out there just wear it on yourself like go on out there we really have to and i think people are hiding behind memes and they're hiding behind these their online little realms but really it does take it does take it to another level to implant people's minds in public with mm -hmm. these ideas too, which is awesome. So I'm glad you're making that. I like your merch. Well done. Mm -hmm. Keep going. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's making it more I acceptable. Like I'm wearing the UFO stuff out. I've had some people that, you know, just kind of look and they're kind of like, you can tell they like it, but it's not, <laughs> it's not as socially acceptable. It's getting there. But um, yeah, it's a good conversation starter too. So thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, of course. So I was just well, thinking it's going mainstream. So it's, I'm seeing it every day and little pokes. So the celebrities are like with poor grammar working their way into discussing these topics. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you feel about Katy Perry, but I just, so just recently, oh. <laughs> um, I, this, yeah, this is an old song by her. I did not like it whenever it came out. I think it might be called Extraterrestrial. Yeah. Um, and, but then I like, heard it again and I listened to the lyrics and I'm like, holy crap, she's talking about 
like being in love with an alien <laughs> talking about being you know in um he's from a higher a different dimension i don't know there's a lot of kind of disclosure and things that are coming out in um you know kind of subtle ways but whenever you actually like listen to it you're like whoa have you seen the video for that one yeah it's pretty intense <laughs> <laughs> i remember when that came out we were all just like okay yeah this is this is it now and it definitely became an aesthetic never really left after that She's done a few crazy videos. Her The Dark Horse one was playing in my head earlier. That video is crazy. <laughs> really funny. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty funny. It, it was definitely intense, but I was like, okay, if you kind of like just, you know, take from it what some of the, basically she was talking about having sex with an ET, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you tone it down a little bit, there's some disclosure in there. Um, yeah, pretty interesting. I thought you were going to bring up her like glitching like little fit that they put spread online the other day and everyone was getting excited about I'm not even sure but there was like a video of her just like full-blown glitching on, wow. at a live concert I don't even know if it's true but it, it it spread like wildfire and I was like okay this is very cute very cute it was so obscenely obvious too I wow. couldn't even look at it I was just like okay you guys look at it like <laughs> she's a robot <laughs> yeah somebody commented clearly yeah gone and, and that is a clone <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately yeah that's another thing about this work too is uh feeling and being an empath and then sensing when people are actually not real and yeah. not knowing how to talk about it but it's becoming obviously more of a conversation and mm -hmm. you know and then moving into like psych my psychic medium abilities as well, just sort of just trying to connect with their soul and then sensing that they were basically taken or, you know, I want to say offered because they were so talented very early in their career and then copied. And so a lot of the what even we know of their personality isn't even who they were at all. So their soul were just quickly removed and replaced and. It's sad, but people can't talk about it either. But psychic mediums and stuff like people can't we can't help ourselves because now celeb celebrities are even coming back to speak with us and like be a part of the mission. Some of them, mm -hmm. uh, ironically, what are, on, what are your thoughts on Kanye? Well, that was one that is certainly a dreamwalker uh, experience that a lot of people I know are seeing him walking in their dreams. I've seen him in my dreams also. I don't think he's really embodied that's not really potentially him anymore but there is some effort like he's not gone he's certainly a strong force since it's, it's it's so funny like it's going to be a little complicated even for us mm -hmm. to quite like quite understand maybe what it is it's mm -hmm. up, maybe it's just up to his his consent to as a soul like what he really wants to do yeah i feel like he's trying and but I mean, I don't know exactly what, what's been going on with him lately, but I don't know. I feel like he is he is a star seed. He may have been taken, you know, advantage of and, and manipulated and stuff. But I don't know. I, I, I can see some of his his messages and he tr him trying to um, just shine light on the corruption in the music industry and things like that. At least back before, I don't. I I think he's like. I heard that he was in the news, pretty crazy, uh, right now. So I don't know. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on with that. But <laughs> I think I heard last he was taking some type of break or something for like a month after he did a little, you know, mm -hmm. extremism. But hey, you yeah. know, it's a Gemini thing. It, we just have to let the Gemini's do what they got to do. <laughs> yeah. Are you a, so you're a Gemini also? No, I, no I'm, not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm a Libra. So we kind of, we get each other, but it's, it's funny because Gemini's the youthful air sign and then Libra's like the middle-aged air sign. And then Aquarius is like the more elder air sign. <laughs> and so yeah. we put up with each other at varying degrees, but Aquarius is a harder time putting up with us. I feel like in general. <laughs> yeah. It's I'm funny. I'm a hardcore Gemini. <laughs> You're a Gemini. Nice. I was going to say <laughs> the youthful, like open communication of Gemini is all it's the it's almost aggressive with its its sharpness, almost and directness. It mm -hmm. makes I think it makes people uncomfortable. It's certainly I get worked on by Gemini all the time, communication wise. <laughs> so I get it. It's yeah. it, it's a great energy, though. People 
I can tell why they were chosen for these big inflammatory characters to come <laughs> through. Like it works so well, but Sagittarius is the opposite of it on the other side of the chart. And they're very mm -hmm. similar, bold, confident, hard to pin down sort of characters. We need them. Let's shout out to the Geminis. Yeah. We got a lot of Geminis here right now. Wow. That's crazy. That's because awesome. they love to chit chat. <laughs> Awesome. All our chat rooms are 90% air signs, I bet, all the time. Maybe water once in a while, you know? Yeah. I like I'm getting that. super into astrology. I can't. I'm sorry. I talk about it like every five minutes now. Are you? So what? <laughs> Huge. I do want to have somebody on to talk about astrology. The ETs have actually been pointing, like nudging me a lot about astrology, looking into it more. Um, and I'm like, it's so like it's vast and confusing. I don't even know what my, my natal chart is or anything like that. But um, yeah, so that's cool that you're getting. Well, let me help you. I'll help you later. We'll get yeah. into it. It's so fun. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Thank you. Yeah, I think there's some answers in there for me. Um, so about the uh, the, okay. the solar activity. Um, so can you can you share a little bit about like what what you do? Um, yeah, what you do and and. I know okay. you kind of collect data and, and all of that and, and kind of like what you are seeing with the sun energy at this time. Absolutely. So those of you who are at all interested in following what the sun actually is being reported to be doing and the other planets as they continue rotating around, which is astrologically related. And the reason I think you're being shown that is because there's electromagnetic fields between all the planets. And so when they rotate, they create static and friction and intensities that are probably going to help you channel and also where planets are pointing and in what star systems, like if what's over the Pleiadian star system and blah, 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 planets over you know, the Sagittarian cluster over there in the central sun, like it's helped me also kind of triangulate my understanding of what sort of moods as well, the sun going to be enhancing when it does continue to blast. And when the planets shift around, it also causes the sun to respond. I've noticed, like I said, it's almost like static electricity, like they're constantly pulling on each other. And that has helped me substantially just this last year sort of jump my research. But in the beginning, I was a psychology graduate and I realized that the electromagnetic field of our planet and of the sun had a huge impact on our psychology. And it was not talked about at all when I was in school for like five years of intense schooling. Like everyone thought they were the coolest person alive because they're getting such a high education. It was embarrassing to learn this huge piece had been not given to, you know, all of these students. Right. And oh. They so it was nutrition and in, in the doctors they don't they only took the <laughs> nutrition class so man I they could tell the doctors about this too like the poor doctors they're constantly dealing with people on a full moon or during a solar flare like emergency calls and what do they tell people like sleep medicine. on it take some medicine exactly medicate or go to sleep and call me back in 24 hours or whatever which for the most part thankfully with the study has also kind of helped Mm -hmm. is that a lot of the symptoms through the space weather I've been capturing do only last around 24 to 48 hours if we're lucky. So mm -hmm. people start to freak out and you're like, just give it, just sleep on it. This should pass. The energy's already kind of moved past the earth. Mm -hmm. So watching the sun do these expressions, the coronal mass ejections and solar flares are the big things where they send a lot more solar wind our way. The flares send like instant multi-dimensional light at us like super quick and mm -hmm. then the flares are these big ballooning expulsions that usually happen after these flares and it pushes out all this matter into the solar wind and then we just get bombarded with it for mm -hmm. the next three days basically with denser and slower energy because it, it, it all comes at different speeds but anyway so the quicker speed stuff usually is very much an emotional shift or an electromagnetic shift. So when the flares happened, it's it's almost like lightning is occurring for us also. And it does mm -hmm. cause lightning in our skies as well in these impact areas. It's a beautiful thing. Like there's a transfer of this energy. It's nice to watch, but people are often put off by it. And we've now had to study nutrition, like you said, uh, heavy metals and as well as microplastics in the body The caused by also taking pharmaceutical med medication has metals in the pills like they have 
metal in there and other things that block electromagnetic frequencies or chi even if you want to go there oh wow your blood your your neural talk your neural chemicals your cerebral spinal fluid like all that stuff it all needs to keep flowing good so when we do have these flares we can ground the energy super fast or unaffected but we're having issues grounding all of this movement and it's solar cycle me a lot yeah. about grounding grounding yes me too. <laughs> <laughs> Have they been oh, showing God. you the chakras a lot by chance the last few days too? It's like the nonstop. Chakras? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's been like, get your chakras figured out and grounded down because the study, the mm -hmm. sun does 11 year cycles. I started studying this around the last solar cycle getting crazy around 2017, 2018, when I woke up from it because it was literally so much, I'm assuming so much light, so much catalyst and then i was like i gotta know i gotta figure this out i gotta follow this because it was making my whole day it was changing my whole life i couldn't even not anymore so this solar cycle now i'm super prepared i've been studying for now five six years and in a wow. way the peaks kind of come in the five six year mm -hmm. undulation because the middle of 11 is five or six and so this next year, or sorry, 2024, late 2024 and into 2025, they say, will be when we're seeing the sun hit its next cycle peak, cycle 25. And what do you uh, think is going to happen then? <laughs> it's funny because I'm already made so much momentum and so many people have woken up to the idea that we're actually connected to the system of the sun and of the earth and the stars and blah, 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 which in some people's lives, that's actually a huge mind opening crown chakra awakening mm -hmm. experience because you're completing your toroidal field. You're finally feeling the, the magnetic field of your body, of the earth. You're feeling it be impacted. You're feeling it, you know, get compressed and so on. Mm -hmm. More sensitive. So sensitizing yeah. people also to their own antenna has been a big part of this for me as well. Right. Yeah. They showed me not too long ago. I had a really crazy experience where suddenly I felt, well, I felt this happened two different times with each with one was an avian ET, okay. a blue avian. The other one was with a, a version of me from Atlantis. <laughs> speak <laughs> I, don't I don't i don't i don't know how that works but um <laughs> and they they like the first time i suddenly felt sacred geometry like expanding from my body speak. all of this like, yeah all of the sacred geom geometry and it lasted for about 20 minutes but it was just a it was something i've never felt before and then the other time with the avian i suddenly felt my tor torodal tor <laughs> my tour field we'll call it right that, <laughs> field around the body um that was my first time feeling that and i think and it just like lasted for you know a brief amount of time but i just thought that was really interesting because it's not something that maybe we don't really think about often but it's it's there absolutely and what you're describing is my joy and what i get to hear from people in our community to waking up in the comments of my instagram or my mm -hmm. YouTube channel, my Telegram. It, it's incredible the sensations and the experiences people do have when these energies are heightened from the space weather, which mm -hmm. is a seasonal experience too. Some of it is very predictable. So we can kind of also predict when we're going to be tripping out more and enjoy it instead of uh, chaos and like get fed off of for fear and whatever. So I think that's why we're preparing is because there's just going to be more energy available and mm -hmm. these heightened experiences could be guided in one way or another, similar to, I would say, uh, an acid trip or a, like a DMT yeah. trip or something of the like where you're kind of initiating chemically instead of waiting for the sun to initiate your chemicals because it happens either way and the way that the sun wind hits our planet it creates basically a song in our in atmosphere mm -hmm. and there's other planets with atmospheres they get a song too it's you get you have to have a, like a floor or a, a surface and you need an ionosphere and then you can have a song playing in there and mm -hmm. you can have mammalian brains functioning in there because the brain uh, the brain waves basically play the same song. You're you're operating the same music, mm -hmm. and so 
Unfortunately, that is an extremely beautiful system. And then we've also learned the artificial ways to stoke this thing. And they have technologies you can buy right now and stick to your own head, turn it on and be like, I don't want to be hungry right now. And it'll play it and it'll stimulate your brain in whatever spot they tell you to stimulate it. And you'll be suppressed, like your diet will be suppressed. You won't want to eat or wow. you're in things like that. And I've done presentations on this type of technology and it's adorable because they're just being like, oh, it's nothing. But of course, then you go into larger arrays and setups of antenna and they can play music into our music, our Earth's music in a way and mess it up where they can subdue it. And I've been watching that on the charts and trying to explain it. But from a civilian perspective, there's very little I can do and also not get extreme about it because that's not my intention. I do mm -hmm. want to take this seriously. I do want it to be somewhat scientific so we mm -hmm. can follow along, have a little bit of, I don't know, integrity with the study that I'm doing publicly. Mm -hmm. I know that's not everyone else's key. And maybe they're more so in for the attention or they're actually scared of what's going on. But I feel very inspired by what I see. And by Solar Cycle 25, I think we're going to have an incredible growth on Earth. I think we're all set up for it. Probably astrologically, I will also need to keep up on that because mm -hmm. I know astrologically, my astrology friends, they're already, they text me all the time like, this is happening now. We're doing this next year. Oh my God, wait till blah, blah, blah year. Oh my God. And they, they know because they see the cycles and they get the math. Yeah, I like, need a friend like that. <laughs> right? Exactly. You will. You're manifesting one right now. Somebody message her after this, okay? And yeah, I need help. <laughs> help her out. The healers need need to help each other. It's like, yeah, we're keeping on top of this clock that we were never taught the how to read on purpose, mm -hmm. but we naturally have within us. So we're f accidentally, I'm accidentally falling into those patterns and figuring out the clock again. Yeah. It's been fun, but the study has come up against some friction because there is agendas or potentially other interests from other scientific studies out there that claim that the Earth's uh, mechanics and the sun's mechanics that are publicly shared are not true, mm -hmm. 100% not true. And there's a whole other system that they project, which I have a very hard time connecting with just as a person. Not saying it can't be done, not saying that I'm totally, you know, with I'm totally ignorant or lost. I want to find out. I want to be mature about all of this. Mm -hmm. As I assume a lot of people want to be, especially if you're putting yourself out there, is be mature, open minded, continue to learn. That's what science is about, anyways. Mm -hmm. And I want to well, know. They're probably the hiding hiding, you know, the big stuff part <laughs> of it. But I'm sure you could prop you I know. do get ideas. Like, I definitely have my ideas about what they're hiding instead. Like, oh, the earth is not that shape. But what they're actually mm -hmm. pointing you away from is we might be potentially upside down. Like our map and things like that. Like, oh, wow. I was going to ask <laughs> if you think it's flat. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think it is. I do believe in the third dimension, like the 3D shaping and mm -hmm. the balls of rock and gas and all that i do believe and i i do understand that and i work with those mechanics but mm -hmm. our map and our poles potentially might not be true or something right. extreme like that but compared mm -hmm. to the shape of the earth it's less intense and then there's this whole thing in the community at least mine in this research is about our actual poles flipping or causing some extreme event but if it's just the conception of the poles flipping and not physically then the the prophecy is correct but it's it's semantic so like well scientifically actually the north pole is in antarctica or whatever and everyone's mm -hmm. minds and how they understand earth will totally shift but we're not going to have a cataclysmic physical event of poles shifting places or whatever i've yeah. thought about that that's <laughs> happened a few times quite a few times here the the sh the flipping yeah it's funny the science talking about the flipping in the past and I look at it with like a little bit of like hmm interesting and I'm I don't know about that I have my moments where I resist the scientific narrative for sure still which is fun yeah but I'm watching the pole migrate for sure and I'm excited because I do think that the migrations of the pole is kind of a normal deal and it's just going to keep migrating and we will just keep migrating also I think 
mm-hmm. on the land masses and so on to keep up with the the climates and stuff that we like. And it's mm-hmm. the shift of power, even if it is whatever pole it is moving from North America and upper Canada all the way over into Russia and Siberia. That's like a shift of power of the planetary focus and where all the energy is gathering at the top of the earth. So wow. even just like uh, politically or so socially, we may just begin, I don't know, caring more about that side of the earth compared to North America yeah. is a thought uh, with that. It's, mm-hmm. it's nothing too extreme, but mm-hmm. more so about human behavior. I definitely want to keep track of human behavior, keep people calm, keep people confident, not run yeah. into conventional right. fear-based places i don't know right yeah the end it's the end of the world the solar flash is gonna kill all of us <laughs> yes that one's fun too <laughs> and thankfully long enough studying it past those doomsday dates as well because there was there used to be a big deal where everyone would get on a bandwagon for a date that we were going to get flashed <laughs> mm-hmm. and then we'd all just wait <laughs> And it was ridiculous. So this has been happening before? Like people were talking about that before too? I would say, yeah, I was dealing. That's why I got into it back in like 2016, 2017, because I was, again, upset Mm -hmm. about people catastrophizing. Mm -hmm. But also if it was true, I might as well participate because what else can you do, you know, if you're going to get flashed to death. But I have since Mm -hmm. learned that, again, there's a benevolence here there's a guiding hand which is also the et contact that i've experienced is the guiding hand and the guiding hands are not aggressive they aren't judgmental to you they are very like this is happening for this and this is happening for this and they give you information but you don't have to listen you don't you can just add it to your own thoughts it's 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 not a commanding energy i've noticed but it's supportive and it's helped me understand what I'm seeing sometimes or, or even jump to even more ex- fun conclusions than you really could with just conventional science. Like I saw something shoot out of the sun the other day, which has been a big deal watching the satellites, seeing these things come and go out of the sun. And I saw a huge, just a huge ejection come off. And immediately I heard in my mind, like, that's a ship, like that one's a ship. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh. And I had just been dreaming and talking about this ship and feeling it coming and what's going on. And then I got to watch it potentially come out of the sun and feel it land on earth even and begin its duties and what's happening. Like there's, there's souls being migrated around via the sun, in my opinion. And Mm -hmm. there's, it's a complicated, wonderful traveling system. It's cute how ignorant we are in a way, but I like it too. I also feel silly sometimes even talking about it because a part of me is like, everybody knows this. But where I'm from, everybody. I assume everyone does. Not everybody. Yeah. <laughs> With the, the sun, that's actually... So I started out doing a lot of um, photography and capturing them a lot on camera. Sweet. And it's crazy how if you just point at the sun and record, um, they can, you know, you'll see like a ball of light or something uh, come out of it. And I think so. I think a lot of them are... It actually... Uh, my friend has a telescope and he took a picture. I, I was going to like show it on here, okay. um, but, I, but I don't, I, I okay. don't have it ready. <laughs> but um, so it was through a telescope, a picture of the sun. You could see this big um, solar, not solar flash, but so, solar flare. And then you zoom in and there was a black triangle just <laughs> right there. I was like, holy crap, you didn't just catch a... Uh, you know, a solar flare, you also caught a ship, (laughs) a ship. And it would have been huge. Yeah. Yeah. I assume. And the size even, like even comprehending the size sometimes to me is mind boggling. Like (laughs) whole Mm -hmm. planets coming out of our sun that are huger than our own planets. Like sometimes it feels like I'm watching and you're just like, (laughs) <laughs> like this is crazy, but it's entertaining mm-hmm. it, it, for sure. And I definitely would love to get my own equipment and just start shooting at the sun and encourage anyone out there who has it to begin doing so, especially now is taking start taking pictures of the sun, especially yeah. if you're if you're thinking what we're talking about is a little woo woo or maybe a little bit too on the edge, but you have the camera, just go ahead. Just go ahead. You just need one day. 
Mm -hmm. It's not even just record. You can do it with your cell phone. I've caught a lot of stuff with my yeah with my with my phone, my cell phone. My phone. Um, yeah. Thank goodness. Many, yeah, yeah. It's pretty amazing. So I, yeah, I definitely recommend uh, people trying. There was and just see what you get. It's fun too. I would I, yes. would, I would just come out. I'd be like, all right, Star Family, are you there? And then I'd record the sun. And I remember the first time that happened. I looked back at it and there were like these orbs shooting out. I was like, oh my God, they are here. <laughs> so yeah, yes. you don't know what, yeah, you don't know what you'll, you'll find. Um, somebody asked what your, Jason asked what your, um, uh, what's your channel name? Ascension Diaries, right? Is your YouTube channel the same or something different? That's right. I am Ascension Diaries. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to answer just a few questions real quick. Alicia also asked, so does that have something to do with seeing light information and rainbow rays? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's beautiful too, because our own atmosphere creates, it is at its own ocean in a way, the upper ocean. The ETs in a way tell me this all the time. They're like, you're, you're in the ocean. You're in an upper ocean. I'm like, okay. So what we're seeing shooting out from outer space through our atmosphere to our eyes is getting this beautiful it's shooting through all of these gases and through all of the stuff that distorts mm -hmm. the color of the light all the time but there is those moments where it seems like there is those divine contact moments with those rays of sunlight and we're getting guided to look and getting guided to take the pictures and i think there is more complexity to these photons and how they're reaching us and mm -hmm. what could be traveling upon them what information can be coded in them specifically and like I said, people will take pictures of the planet through our atmosphere and it's doing all this like warbly, watery movement and changing colors. And people are like, this isn't real. Like those aren't really there. It's like, well, get above the atmosphere and then take the picture again. You're going to have, it's going to be pretty much not moving at all. <laughs> this mm -hmm. object is going to be very still and uninterrupted, but not mm -hmm. many of us get that privilege. Although I think that's going to continue being a theme for all of us we're going to get to explore these things more mm -hmm. but like you can get simple things from just the rainbow energy i think yeah and even like through people taking pictures um you see these amazing incredible beings just like you can't you may not necessarily see them with your eyes but the camera can capture these just incredible beings like made out of light it blows me away. So that makes me think, yeah, I guess these beings are traveling through this light. What information are they, are you, you know, receiving at that time? It's just, it's mind blowing. It's incredible. It's very cute. And I get a lot from the Fae, the Fae. I wanted to ask you about the, the fairies. Can you, do you have, yeah. What's your story with the fairies? <laughs> it seems like it's a very broad term, almost the Fae. And it may even be the beings who can are in that slightly higher vibration and that's just what they call themselves is the fae. So it could be all types of beings, but primarily the fairies, I would say, or the pixies in a way, the nymphs or something there is, or the sylphs is another one people talk about a lot when it comes to the sky phenomena and visitations and stuff of them trying to talk to you, contact you. Mm -hmm. It's it's tricky because everybody's different and I feel like they enjoy engaging with you in their own unique way based off your personality 100%, because 100%. it's easier for them to observe us versus us observe them. And mm -hmm. so how you need to engage is going to be up to them sometimes <laughs> and they're going to figure it out for you. But just being playful with it as if you are one of their siblings or a cousin of theirs in a way energetically just kind of makes it, it disarms, I would say, any fae when you're like, oh, cousin. And mm -hmm. then it's like, okay, this mm -hmm. person's going to not be weird and try and attack me or anything. And they'll show you more of themselves in some sort of form. I've They're had people beautiful. physically see them and physically see like a fairy humanoid thing in a window, but that was in that was over by Salt Lake City in, in Utah. There's some magic in Utah. The fairies, apparently, there's some actual fairy-like beings running, wow. flying around over there, hanging out with the kids, you know, the kids who can see them yeah. and mess pop in and say hi to them. And there's all these little types of beings in all these different areas you can engage with. And mm -hmm. when it comes to Sedona, it's basically... It's almost like a vacation spot or a meeting area for a whole bunch of different kinds of 
beings. And yeah. so, so Alexis lives in Sedona. I just found this out recently. Yeah. Tell us like, what, what is the energy like there? What kind of things do you <laughs> see there? And hi, Dr. Dan. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Yes, uh, Sedona, you guys have to come see it if you haven't yet. It's a multidimensional port. It is a galactic port that I've actually been told by some people who may or may not have been in that side of the military where it's like this place is different airspace rules. There's different rules here specifically, which is why I think a lot of uh, seeking star seeds end up wandering in here. And a lot of them don't even have shoes at that point. Like it's at the point where you're almost connecting the most with the earth or the most grounded version of you, which often you're not focusing on anything else other than the more raw experience of life. Mm -hmm. And I see it all the time. I myself was at one of my lowest places of material wealth or uh, direction when I came here, but I came here to guard another, uh, another, uh, conference which was Sedona Cosmic Awakening they call it mm -hmm. and it was an impulse for me and I was in Upper California and I had to go and it was in Sedona and so I messaged them like we're gonna make our way over there I need to guard this place I don't know why and they were like come volunteer mm -hmm. and we since moved there and learned a lot huh. but and you like it never left basically. <laughs> it, it, it's funny because I it was like I never intended to stay, but it just kept coming back. And then we were offered a place to take over, and we were homeless at the time. So it was like, thank you. We've been waiting so long for someone to be like, come take over our house or whatever. You know, we were trying to yeah, figure yeah. that out for so long. <laughs> and so yeah. the locals, was, whenever I went recently, the uh, multiple locals kept saying, you know, if if Sedona wants you here, Sedona will find a way for you to right. stay. Like everybody was saying that. <laughs> it was an honor. I did feel lucky. I did feel lucky. And also a part of me was like, oh, like I was trying to manifest a beach, like shoot, but we were so close. We're in the, this like this gem in the desert, which is so much more complicated and intense than a beach. <laughs> and it is like one of the biggest retirement areas for the three letter agencies and like ex police and stuff. Also, it's they a lot of them like to retire around here. Really? So there's a lot of that type of energy here. There is active bases in the city, outside the city. Everybody here talks about it. Everybody here knows that there's contact sightings, vortexes, everyone, including all the NPCs that drive through here. It's like there's a program that just slips onto their brain and they're like crystals and vortexes and energy. And it becomes something that they say. And I remember the days where I never even said the word energy in a day, you know, and now we say it pretty much every sentence. I think I do a lot of the time, especially <laughs> when I'm writing. And so, yeah. It's nice because each different collective, there's so many different collectives, there's so many different lessons that this land can teach you, but it's a very compact space. There's really not a lot of space, but there's these massive monuments and mountains that are like melted castles. And a lot of what I see is that potentially this area was flash petrified or flash turned to stone. And wow. it could, it has this deep trauma here. Like you could tell something weird happened here and that there's clearly a secret because the structures here are so grand and unnaturally natural mm -hmm. that you're kind of like, what is that? But I did get the message that it was like flash turned to stone. And this was something oh, wow. that happened to Atlantean cities and so on was like turning it to stone immediately. And that's an easy way to stop everything in its tracks basically i have no mm -hmm. idea how that's done but it's it was intense when i did get that vision and also half of it was underwater for a lot of time too a lot of this was underwater so there's spirits oh. of underwater being still around and a lot of us dream of the water <laughs> while we're living here wow it's a confusing area too and <laughs> there's secret areas the where there's yeah, yeah a lot while I was there. There is a ton and it's <laughs> I don't even go outside sometimes because you're just like <laughs> you're just like this is not my day. I just there's a party going on out there I can tell and you feel all different beings running around different temperaments and there's many attacks and there's many psychological operations happening and wow. a ton of conferences that are 
There's a ton of uh, charlatans also and very dangerous spiritual leaders that come through here to try and use the area for gatherings and feeding off of people basically. And there's a very parasitic attitude people have here as well of where everyone feels like they're supposed to be basically as rich as kings and they're better than everyone else. And there's this hole in their heart that they can't fill. And so people here often wear a lot of shiny things mm -hmm. and a lot of like extra more so for their character of their spiritual guru-ness. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of very finding yourself, there. finding very yourself energy and expensive, which is extreme so there's all these broke people here and then they can't they can't ever find a place to stay and they don't know what to do and they get lost oh but there's free camping just outside of the city just for all those people well, to end up so it's nice it's 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 this like crazy womb basically it looks like an embryo from space too which is cool if you just kind of zoom in on sedona it looks like that a little embryo that and yeah but i get crazy here too i'm just like i gotta get out of the this little vortexy city it's, it's it's nice to look at it from the outside <laughs> be like yeah oh, honestly take a break. whenever i went i was like um i was expecting to have a really great spiritual time <laughs> well, and no. uh, i ended up like kind of dealing some with some heavy stuff i was like whoa but then the last day while i was hiking on um, one of the spots i was like you know what's what what's going on and Basically, I was trying to fight those emotions and I got like a message from the divine that was like, stop fighting the emotions. You are human. And then suddenly it just like all washed over me. I was like, oh, OK, <laughs> but it just it stirred up a lot. There is a lot of energy there. Um, it, but yeah, yeah, I think it could be a very magical. magical I warn people about that, actually. When they do come. I didn't get yeah. the warning. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I I do my best, you know. I'm out here being like, it's cute, y'all, but you think you're gonna have a cute little vacation with your lover, you know, your bestie. And then it's like Rah! Yeah, and I watch it all the time and then and then people want to come visit us when they're here. And I'm like, How many days are you gonna be here? And they're like, Oh, like three or four. And I'm like, All right, <laughs> maybe you're on your next one because it's time extremely fast here and then you're just like you feel all of that you know mm -hmm. all that stuff that needs to get cleared out of your body <laughs> people yeah. here are pissed like they get so angry there's so much fire you know that the red rock too and it just stirs up it just mm -hmm. pushes everything out of you so if you right. can handle yourself in Sedona and you've not been here before it's a huge feat and I think you should be very proud of yourself <laughs> because Overall, I'll try for round two. I'll try for round two. <laughs> oh yeah, I still. I think I just needed the most work out of our whole community, and that's why I'm just sitting in here because it's just shooting out of me all day, every day. Still, I'm just getting all the stuff out. For it's for the collective. Sometimes yeah. I like to say, "Oh, I'm just I'm purging for the collective." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's great. Important work. Guardian 555, a fairy t-shirt. That sounds nice. I want to make a Sasquatch one as well. <laughs> yes, they're very have... active here. They're, in the my Sasquatch. opinion. The yes, Sasquatch. I think this is my biggest homies in the city for sure. Like people bond with different groups, but the Sasquatch were for me. The group yeah, that awesome. I feel safe with. They're so funny. They are cool. I went camping last weekend and I see them through like i can like sense their energy but then i'll like not right. visually see them really but it's weird it's like i see suddenly in like the tree i see like a sasquatch silhouette um it's not like physically there but suddenly it kind of makes itself known to me and i can feel its energy and it was nice. just kind of hanging out um and Looking yeah I remember, yeah <laughs> from the yeah. trees <laughs> yeah I love, they love I to do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i felt like it was also kind of like guarding too yeah. just kind of hanging out and guarding i was doing a lot of purging that night <laughs> oh they probably loved it <laughs> yeah but they're they're really cool my interactions with sasquatch i i love them i'd like to um maybe we can do an, a sasquatch activation sometime i i would love that and if you do come out here for the uh what is it the sedona adventure starseed adventures retreat that's happening on the 11th through 16th i may be able to take you guys to where the sasquatch hang out and i've brought groups there before it was great because 
people yeah. don't always believe like when they want to step into a fey realm in the in the woods sometimes and i've been there where there's that resistance where you're like i don't feel any different i don't see anything specific like what is going on here and it takes some time to warm up and allow the area to kind of show you that there is something playing in the area and engaging with you Mm -hmm. but I had this whole group and it did get dark and we saw ended up seeing the new Starlink satellites go over and people were shocked because when you do see them, you realize those are not normal. Those are not, it's not an earthly light. It's not a human looking technology. It definitely looks different and the way it behaves, but I took pictures of people in the dark and in the dark, in the flash were hundreds of, orange orbs around the group and it could have been the red dust in the air but it was so shocking to me when I took these pictures I was just blown away and I was like I think that was it like I think this is it and I'm just taking a picture of my group and they're just surrounded by these orange orbs in the picture it was a great it was a great accident and it's those moments where you're having that like well we had fun we played we offered gifts we hung out and then some people are kind of like grumpy with me, like, oh, a Sasquatch didn't just kidnap me. Like, I want my money back. It was a free event. <laughs> it was a free event for these reasons, too. But I got these pictures. And I think after that, people were pretty satisfied. So, no, yeah, that made me incredible. feel better. That's yeah, it was cool. Uh, somebody was asking if you offer like tours in Sedona also. Oh, for sure. I've been doing them on and off. It's mm-hmm. tricky to do. But if you mm-hmm. just are in town and you want to do a tour, I have a free one on my website, ascensiondiaries.com. And you can pick it up. And I've specified and got the Google Doc and the locations of sev- for seven days of actual 14 separate locations that you could go in the city that wow. have that that are worthy of your time and how to do it and what's the best time and so on. Mm-hmm. So free for anyone who wants to do their own little tour here in town. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Instagram. Just give her, give a tip at least. Give her a tip. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'll get it'll come back in some form or another too. They'll usually yeah. people are pretty happy. And I try to at least I try to encourage everyone who comes to town to text me or message me, like feel free. I'm not I'm I'm actually kind of a shy person. I, I'm slow to warm up to people, so I take my time with people, but I love people. Like I love you guys so much but mm-hmm. i have to be cautious you know meeting strangers kind of weird yeah but in I sedona people just feel it they're just like well i would just want to hang out i just want to do stuff and they're so like wow on the energies and i've just been sitting in them for uh since 2020 started just being like i'm just gonna ride this one out because the eclipse is happening and my dogs are crapping on the floor like everything <laughs> everything's falling apart around me as it does every like two months here in the vortex is yeah. our dogs just like lose all control of themselves. And I'm like, okay, wow. the energy is shifting and uh, it's, it gets intense in here. I want to move out of the vortexes and see if they get better, if all of us get better because yeah. our health is, it's almost a little bit difficult to stay healthy here, I think, because we're burning a little faster. We're, we're yeah. getting like burned out a little more potentially. Yeah. yeah but we're young. Means- but people retire here too. So I, I wonder how those guys feel, but mm-hmm. it's mostly empty houses here. Honestly, they have a big issue with rental. They're trying yeah. to, it's, the it's a strain that too. Like, the local so many empty houses. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. That's sad. Um, yeah, guys hit the like button if you are here right now or listening to this later. And if you are going to Sedona or planning a trip, feel free to, could people like reach out to you on Instagram? Yeah, people okay. chat me up all day on Instagram. Diaries, and yeah. um, I was about to say, oh, this the Starseed Adventures. There were there were people asking me recently about any conferences coming up. So there is one coming up in Sedona, which Alexis will be at um, in the beginning of December. That's right. We're going to be here. It's going to be awesome. It is a retreat style event, so it's going to be a little bit longer. It's from the 11th through 16th. You're sp- you're encouraged to stay on site at the hotel pack and get a package and stay with a friend or whatever. But there's other mm-hmm. there's other places to stay. But truly, at least now that we're getting up to the day, it's all going to be around the same price anyways, unless you know somebody. So mm-hmm. staying on site will be a lot of fun. It's its own little kind of resort on the edge of town right next to a grocery store. 
so you're good. It's mm -hmm. it's not too tough. And yeah, retreats are great. And I personally do a conference that we did in 2021 called the Great Family of Light Gathering. Mm -hmm. And it was over the weekend. It was a less less days. And we're going to do one in September 2023. So if you guys want to go to familyoflight.info, the website as well, and put your email in there. Mm -hmm. If you want to come to Sedona in September and give yourself some time from now, we'll be giving those announcements out later too. And yeah, just keep creating opportunities for people to come here and hang out with each other. Yeah. We're making our own conferences because I want to say the new gen is just tweaking it a little bit to be like a little bit better and a little bit more social and a little less, little mm -hmm. less hierarchical, a little bit more Aquarian, maybe our age mm -hmm. of Aquarius sort of style conferences and gatherings. And yeah. we mostly just bring people who we watch on YouTube and support on YouTube together because that's who we care about and who we want to meet more and hang out with more and do more mm -hmm. events with and it's been going yeah. well over the last few years. I think our community is really shaping up and learning its structural soundness and who you can rely on for what. And yeah. I'm the space weather woman, you know, everyone, every single <laughs> psychic, you know, I hear my vo my name come out of their mouth whenever they're like, yeah, I've been really feeling it. But Alexis posted about the solar flares today or, you know, whatever. And that makes me feel good because I'm glad to be useful. Mm -hmm. And I just want to mm -hmm. keep encouraging people to keep studying it themselves because I always, it's always nice to have other opinions and I can't watch all the time, but I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do watch yeah. all the time. I'm always here for it. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to stick it out until after the solar cycle 25 really peaks in 2025. I think that's what my guides in this whole thing has been setting me up for. It's just been like 2025 cycle 2025. Well, yeah. What else do you think is going to happen in 2025? Oh, there's so many opportunities. I mean, even yeah. conceptually from now, people are already kind of preparing themselves to for ET contact for right. more spaceships. They're putting it out there. They're, the military is trying to discuss it. They're making shows about it. They're getting people more prepared. But I genuinely, I'm not sure what direction they want to take it. I know they're trying to hand the power back to the people, but how long is that going to take? The spiritual growth has to catch up. If you had these types of technologies to fly around in, mm -hmm. how would you even air traffic control that? These are questions I even have where I'm just like, this is going to be a complicated sh shift if we begin yeah. going to these craft that are uh, electrogravitically powered so they can just get pulled through time and space basically without any friction and all these crazy things. These technologies mm -hmm. that people do talk about and I've been studying for a while even talking about how the sun could shut down our infrastructure is such an old, in my opinion, an old fear because I'm almost 100% sure we don't have the technology anymore that could get shut down from a solar flare mm -hmm. where it counts, where it counts. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have our cutesy little civilian tech that could get fried, but it's mm -hmm. not a concern to the military defense of our planet. They certainly have their stuff figured out and the moon is becoming way more important in 2025 i assume the moon narrative and what's going on there is going to keep increasing but i'm not sure exactly how it's going to go i assume more people are going to get contacted by their et you know Star families <laughs> more so and but it's happening so much like how it's going to even keep mm -hmm. jumping on to itself even just the next three years i I'm I'm going to be along for the ride. Like that's why I called it Ascension Diaries because I was just like, I don't yeah. pretend to know what's happening, but I'm going to keep up with it in the moment and share yeah. honestly and have a great time <laughs> and awesome. fathom the unfathomable as it continues and even learning Laura, about. Oh, yeah, okay. Laura said, beam me up. <laughs> I think beam a lot up. of our families and our aspects of us are working on some of these ships and and taking care of the planetary school. And yeah. people who can't handle the next lessons that are going to be coming in, they're going to be taken to a different school. And we won't even notice because there's. I think this process is constantly happening to us and our families and stuff. Souls are just coming in and out and going here and going there and in and out of time. And mm -hmm. I've learned so much through this work. But thankfully, it's also grounded me because the sun really is constantly just flashing us. And then whoop, more people wake up. 
whoop, mm-hmm. more people wake up, whoop, yeah. mutating. And also people are dying in those moments too. It's like you surf, you can surf, people are getting pregnant in those moments and people are dying in those moments. So it's mm-hmm. like, it's the real spark plug of life going on. It's it's all, yeah, it's empowering. Almost every chakra and almost every sort of distortion of humanity if you can compare the systems of your life more to the nature natural Mm -hmm. rhythms of things i feel like that uh, inverted structure that we are raised in is just going to easily fall away and i've been working on that and i made my own calendar and again studying astrology to try Mm -hmm. and let go of the old cult cult cultural situations that i was raised in and religious indoctrination and then the scientific indoctrination and just let it all melt away as the sun is talking to us and that yeah. talking to us all very similarly. It's not like I'm getting obscenely different messages from all my other friends and star seeds. We're getting all the similar energy. We're having the similar symptoms. Yeah. I was going to ask, so what, what are some symptoms that, that you're seeing and kind of some things that you're seeing with uh, people in your chat and your friends lately? Lately, for sure, it's been the babies and the animals who are having a hard time. And the last week and during the eclipse, it was really tough Yeah, on those babies and adults, obviously, but the babies were like, wow. it was not good. And like a lot of upset digestive uh, tracks, a lot of that. And head pressure is a big one too. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have blockages in their crown chakra and they get a lot more pressure and pain because mm-hmm. they refuse to connect to the one infinite creator in a, on a daily basis and actually think themselves a piece of it. They could, they disconnect themselves and think they're not attached. We mm-hmm. have to just like push through the ceiling and own that you are one cell in this massive body. You can't mm-hmm. escape from it. So just chill and do your part as your cell and stop trying to like kill yourself by like pulling yourself away from everything you know because that's how the cell dies and gets shot out and decomposed for more cells to be grown like that's how Mm -hmm. you get reabsorbed so if you want to live you have to reach out or your body's going to start you know breaking you down and that's the pain you physically are feeling is this the body either removing a cell that no longer is functioning or you're getting replenished by the body's like uh, electrical pulses and blood that's constantly flowing through the solar wind and and so on in my opinion mm-hmm. and, uh, there's a lot of people preparing to die like we as a psychic medium i get the message about death still all, often and i'm not trying to glorify it and i don't think it's going to be from a solar flash and mm-hmm. personally i don't think we're going to get death from that but i think it's going to promote death naturally as the solar flashes start to increase this next few years and mm-hmm. we'll get less breaks between mutations. So you have to be a very healthy being so you can keep mutating every time the sun is flashing you. So mm-hmm. like when we, we didn't need to worry about this, the kids are usually fine. They get sick as heck, but they bounce back for the most part. You just got to keep them hydrated. And I think it is part of the Drink mutating Drink a lot process. of water. Drink a lot of water, you guys. Drink a ton of water. Get those, uh, those minerals in there salt water uh listen to your body magnesium is a huge one magnesium get it in your baths in your in your daily regimen there we gotta it helps the energy move through your body but i do think magnesium i take magnesium at bedtime too i haven't taken it last week so thank you for reminding me (laughs) yes and i'm doing guardian training as well now because i've been training people ask me a million questions but now it's like every month there's a theme i'm doing a zoom call we're going together we're doing some qigong we're doing some intention setting we're clearing some cords and we we're moving on and i'm making more of an effort to grow and advance with people and i call it guardian Mm -hmm. training because i'm not really messing around the guardians were who i connected to the most as at sort of contact situation it was the guardian energy and what was going to be going on and what had already happened. And I, I don't get serious about it because I'm just following along. Like being a guardian is not that hard guardian angel, you know, being kind to whatever approaches you and doing Mm -hmm. something kind for people uh, at large. It's not Mm -hmm. too hard, but people do get stuck and they do need help and encouragement 
yeah. to keep moving in that direction to break out and make their own business of service to others instead of working for some type of faceless corporation or whatever just to feel safe enough mm -hmm. um the yeah. this new solar cycle and all of this is more and more and more potential for all of the solar star seeds to get activated, begin doing your true soul expression. You're going to be shining more and serve because there will be the opposite reaction. There's going to be more need, I think, for the light during that time also because some people aren't going to make it. And mm -hmm. I think we did have issues, I think, during the last peak of the solar cycle. That's when cancer became a huge deal. Everybody was doing cancer runs. Everybody's parent, uncle, aunt, grandma, grandpa, everyone was getting cancer all of a sudden. And I'm pretty sure that all aligned again with the solar cycle mm -hmm. intensity. So these mutations that you should be doing naturally can unnaturally happen at exp exponential rates, I think, during these times too. And I think that they've been um, preparing, you know, they've been preparing the bodies of the subjugates more so for the next solar cycle is what I was being shown. And that's why they called it Corona because mm. the Corona of the sun is that's what you call it. That's that's what's shooting off the sun. That's going to hit us is the Corona. So, Oh, wow. It's the same. So when I, when that all happened, I was just staring. I was just like, this is a joke uh, <laughs> because the Ascension prophecies is about the sun, something about the sun shifting us. And now it's like, Oh, Corona. So they like did the opposite. It was very strange. So I don't know if they were preparing everybody to deal with the sun without the spiritual growth, just to like keep up or keep their, you know, their working class masses like in and survive the solar shift. Mm -hmm. Or it was something else that I don't understand yet. And I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it. If there's a higher and better timeline, even I'm willing to go in that direction, but I've had many thoughts about it and we've seen the, mm -hmm. the, the news about it and what's getting talked about. So I don't know why I keep getting that there's going to be lots of death, but also I feel like there's a lot of people that aren't, aren't actually rebirth. alive. Rebirth too. Well, and that's the rebirth. That I've been getting. Um, I just like that because I'm like death and rebirth. <laughs> <laughs> Those are cute. Thank you. That's my uh, that's been my theme this past week, just burning away. Yes, fire purifying. Um, it has just been so helpful. I've been doing some some intense work <laughs> the past two weeks. Have on. you been doing parasite cleansing too? What's that? Have you been doing parasite cleansing too? No, but maybe I should. Can you tell me about it? <laughs> <laughs> that's the other side of the death. The, in the prophecy, because it's almost like the necessary deaths that need to happen for our bodies to keep going, and it's like we have these vis the, we have these beings living in our in our body, but they aren't going to make the vibrational shift. Wow. So but they're trying to pull you down and like control and slow the progress of all these people because they don't want to lose their host, they don't want to lose their source of food and energy, and so there is that resistance and. <laughs> wow. Parasite cleansing is also parasites was also potentially a big part of what was also being dealt with with the treatments. It may have been a treatment toward or a treatment of parasites in a way as well is something I was getting. So that's something I had considered. And it's a huge theme. Like literally everybody, all of our friends are doing it right now. You have to be doing it. Like just get yourself some parasite cleanse pills and start. What would you recommend? Because that has come come up um, too much today to be a, a coincidence. A coincidence. Like okay. <laughs> Easy one to start with is one called either Rug, R-U-G. That one's from David Avocado Wolf. You can get it on his website. I've had that one. It worked. I did a full regimen of that. You take one of them on the first day, two of them on the second day, three on the third day until you get to 10. And then you just keep taking 10 until the bottle's empty. When I took the first bottle, I was like, I should do this for 12 months straight. And then everything in my life, because when you clear the parasites, you're clearing more than just something physical out of your body. And it makes everything else, even if there are also other things infected with parasites, they also get mad at you. And there's this like upset. So it's like you got to gently allow the sloughing of this density out of your body. Don't yeah. rush it because it will 
resist you is what I've learned big times. So you have to take it slow and it's like inching along is the smartest way to do it. And uh, yeah, there's one on Amazon you can buy called Scram. S, you know, Scram. That's the one I tried for this round. And mm -hmm. they're just little capsules with uh, certain herbal blends in them, basically. Okay. Scram from Amazon. Yeah. Would recommend. Usually also work with your kidneys and your liver at the same time. So if you ever have any issues with those or if you have any issues with like constipation and in general, take something along with those things too when you're cleansing because they will actually retreat into your organs and your body. Wait, what if it's you Yeah, <laughs> these, these beings or these intelligences that are just doing their best, you know, to live in whatever warm, soft cave they've found themselves growing in in your body, they will retreat into those soft caves and into your organs and so on if your gut is too toxic for them because they can survive away from your gut for like a whole month at least. And then during the moon cycles and stuff, they come out and feed actually, which is kind of, you know, that's why the full moon and the moon thing is actually, there is some control going on with that. There is collaboration going on with that. So during the full moon, the parasites were for sure during this eclipse, they were a wriggling, they were out feeding, like this was a part of what they needed to do. So if you're getting triggered wow. during this time, you may also be like, okay, if I get triggered during full moons, time to just do that parasite cleanse. Like, let's just do 20 pills that day. You'll be fine. Obviously, that's extreme. Don't do that. But like, I have, I get excited. I get extreme too. So I've had to be cautious about it. Sometimes I like to take on things like really intensely. I did that when I first cleansed my diet and I basically almost disappeared. So that was a whoops. But had to do it, had to learn that. And same mm -hmm. with parasite cleansing, you have to be super careful because it is an intelligence that you're wow. working through and they'll make you crave sweets basically. So eat the sweet, eat your parasite cleanse pill at the same time. And then it's like raid. It's like, gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna convince a lot to like finally release out of your your digestional tract and stuff, wow. which apparently there's lots of little nooks and crannies that stuff can just like <laughs> just sit up in there with and they make themselves a nice little house and they're like, okay, I've got matter and I'm protected and I'm stuck stuck to your bloodstream. Like, oh, don't look up pictures of it though, because, oh, I mean, you can if you want, but that's not me. <laughs> Some people yeah. get really into it and <laughs> it's just picture city and just don't, if your friend loves to take pictures, just never look through their phone again. Just don't do it because it's just going to be, it's going to be bad. Like people get proud to see their progress, what's passing through their body too, because then they realize like, oh my gosh, like I was a colonized being. Like wow. what? Oh and my gosh. It's really hard to learn about it too, because wow. it's. I'm okay, guys. <laughs> it's not, it's intense. I know I've learned so many fun, cute things to help out. Uh <laughs> So you so, found that very, very helpful. You I could did. really feel the difference. Okay, awesome. There's and I'm doing it again. People, okay. There's a, quite a few people in the chat who are talking about going through it too. And the ETs have been showing me, reminding <laughs> me of diet lately. So what you eat also affects, you want good gut bacteria. You want a healthy gut. That's kind of like one of the number one things. And your gut and your brain are connected. So what you eat affects the way that you think and how you feel. And they've been telling me, I did like a short little video on this, but like cinnamon, um, eggs, spinach, but really like brain foods, whole grains, oats, um, like oatmeal, um, lean meats, also fruits and vegetables, of course, just like stuff like that. I'm sure will also probably help with, um, with, you know, with detoxing. Yes. Some people are doing the carnivore diet as well. The keto carnivore diet for a few months to really <laughs> get rid get of all the sugar and stuff yeah and if yeah. especially if they have like any sort of candida overgrowth and issues in the lower abdominal like tissues discomfort um bad breath huge one you'll notice it on your breath you'll also notice when you've successfully killed some things that have been festering in your body because they will off gas in your body and so you can smell it on your breath you can smell it coming out of you it's depending on how colonized you were. And some people are, especially if you've traveled anywhere into the East, but you're from the West, you don't have the same level of <laughs> protection from those things, especially if you got sick 
going out there, if you went, got sick traveling anywhere from what soil you were born on, likely you got infected with some parasites and you need to get those out of there. Wow. Because it'll just keep reflaring up. And yeah, I was, our culture in the West does not have any holiday, have any sort of time where there is any sort of cleansing. And that's actually uncommon, I guess, culturally in a lot of places there is cleanse time. It's, and it's normal. Yeah. And so they're just. ETs have been telling me the past few days too, because I've been, yeah, just going through a lot. And they were just telling me that earlier detox you're detoxing <laughs> detoxing and i was like oh okay you may be like exhausted too right now i've been you know kind of sleepy but yeah detox that's a good point we should take time to cleanse our bodies mind spirit and do detoxes i like it all right everybody we're starting a detox <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do it and by this together. time <laughs> exactly and it's easy to keep up with, thankfully, and I want to warn you that about two to three days in, the internal intelligences in your body will start trying to turn you away from doing what you're going to do. So you have to set an alarm on your phone and physically follow through for yourself because they control your brains. Like they will control you <laughs> away. They will control you <laughs> in ways you never even knew. And I've watched it like and that's another thing, like some people are not alive and they are being puppeteered by intelligences that look and act like this. That's what I've learned. It could be that easy. And I mean, Star Stargate talked about a similar deal, like they call it the Vril and there was a parasite living inside the body and that was the host and both of you would die with each other. And it was a huge fearful thing that they talked about in Star Trek, but you will survive your parasite mm -hmm. cleanse if you're smart and take it easy on yourself and keep that alarm going because yeah i remember on day four it was like i couldn't even remember if how, what day i was on i couldn't remember how many pills i was supposed to take and i was like oh maybe i'll just stop and i was like wait a minute <laughs> i never give up that easy so i was just shook and i was like ha 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 and so i took extra oh my god <laughs> i actually made cupcakes with a whole bunch of detox uh uh stuff in it to like mix the worlds and it's working wow. <laughs> it's working so it, i was my little experiment this week was detox cupcakes because they still want the sugar okay so it was like <laughs> i said i was trying to bait them in and yeah. i get a little ex i don't know i'm an experimenter an inventor i'm a scientific lady can't help myself it's helping so many people but mm -hmm. the solar activity is just a piece of it uh, the earth bodies that we're in need to be properly maintained so we can process the solar energy the plasma energy because we aren't made of us we aren't suns we are clay and earth and <laughs> they've shoved a whole bunch of other minerals and elements in there sometimes that don't belong but right. they can be purged out we have waters internal waters so just get your waters flowing and yeah, it's. I have optimism for us. I know people yeah. who really want to live and who really want to thrive are going to be guided along that path to do so, and it will it will be victorious. And their DNA is going to pass on, and mm -hmm. we're going to keep evolving as a race, and including more of our hybrid ET story of our planet, which. It's tricky because there's a whole bunch of hybrid children running around who have no idea that that's what they are. And they've been showing me children so much the past couple of weeks. I think we're we're going to we're about to start. We are about to start getting some more disclosure on the wow. hybrid hybrid uh, programs and things. I think it's a lot more common and probably a lot more in our face than we think. So how that goes. <laughs> I, uh, I agree. I am also wondering. I've been, the theme I did this month, you said yours was death and rebirth, very, the very Scorpio, this Phoenix energy of November. Yep. And then for the guardian training I was doing this month, the theme was dreams because mm. clearing yourself so you can dream every night is a huge goal that I want people to keep achieving as well is get some sort of dream recall every night and then work towards getting your diet as well as your behavior patterns back into receiving dream confirmations information from your multidimensional travels as a person to yeah. kind of keep up with yourself and not get stuck over processing emotions and stuff because you're not sleeping right and 
slamming into your body really hard after you were astral projecting and throwing out your neck or when the solar flares go off, people's necks get thrown out when they're sleeping because they're sleeping on a pillow and that energy shoots through their body and gets stuck in like a crink of their neck in the, immediately and they wake up like, what's wrong with me? And all of your friends are like, my neck is sore today. So I recommend my don't sleep on a pillow. Sore. My thigh. It's weird. Like just what's like your thigh. I don't know what it. I don't know what it, my right thigh. Maybe you got like a little, a, little bit. <laughs> a chi block in there. A little. Maybe. Just okay. while I'm sleeping. Yeah. I'm like, I need to stretch more. And I've been really feeling called to start jogging. Um, yes. That'll help a like, ton. Yep. They make me do jumping jacks a lot. <laughs> I like <laughs> that. Jumping that's, jacks that's are a good easy. Idea. You don't even have to leave to do those. You can just do them right then and there. That's what I hear. They're like, you don't have to leave. It's okay. <laughs> and the the dogs have a harder time attacking you uh, every time. It, they get so excited. I start yeah. working out and it's like <sighs> playtime. Yeah. They go crazy. They love it. The, <laughs> getting your heart rate up is a huge one, especially in getting more oxygen into the system. And yeah, doing like 100 jumping jacks, you'll be breathing. Your heart will be pumping. You'll be alive again. And that's and enough for the whole day. Then. And the yes, serotonin. Yeah, the endorphins. If you've been, you know, feeling kind of like moody or just not the the happiest movement will help boost your serotonin, the happy chemical. So um, so yeah, that too. We got a lot of homework, you guys. <laughs> yeah, the dreams. You know, people are mentioning the dreams. It's cool because people are like, Well, how are you gonna do a workshop about dreams? And there's so many different types of dreams. There's the dreams that you make with your heart where you're actually manifesting and attracting a dream. And then there's you, your dream time space, which is sort of how you experiment with the outcomes and the progress of you achieving your actual heart's desires and your dreams in life. It seems like that's the space where you get more information. But not only that, you get way more perspective on why you want to have those dreams or perhaps why those dreams are not the best idea for you after all. And it'll seed you with a new dream into your heart. And then you'll wake up with a new desire and spend your time all day, your waking hours working on that new desire. And we're getting implanted with this information. And some of us are getting prophetic images and it's following. I get a lot of great messages in my dream or as I'm waking up. What would you say to somebody who doesn't remember their dreams at all? Well, I dream just, journal and set that intention. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, one thing I know is that this people with souls dream. <laughs> so yeah. if you are not getting your dreams or not dreaming much, we have a soul issue, unfortunately, that we need to be a little serious about and demand that your soul be returned to you and that you wish to be a divine sovereign being of your own soul and your own soul travel and that you're going to begin writing things down and working more with the dream version of you in a way, mm -hmm. your dream version. Actually, I funny enough, Rick and Morty, I don't know if you watched them, but they did an episode this season called uh, Sleep Person or Your Sleep Person. Mm -hmm. And they were programming themselves. So when they would basically sleepwalk and do all these house chores and then their oh sleep, God, their sleep so people were turning against the awakened people by doing all these crazy things to the house while... Mm -hmm they were like zombified basically. And then they'd wake up and see the demands of the sleep version of themselves. So it's an extreme example of the disconnection of your soul that does and can happen where your subconscious and your conscious mind are operating on two totally different agendas. And that's another issue. I think that was a big, uh, a big desire and why a lot of those technologies like TV were able to inform your subconscious mind to basically shove a bunch of information in there so you mm -hmm. couldn't process your own personal soul information. You're also processing the episode of The Simpsons and all the other random stuff that we got fed, you know, the news. You know, yeah. I watched a ton of TV growing up. That's not really a thing anymore. People don't really watch TVs as much. We all are on our laptops and phones or whatever, but the commercials even, like they're shoving stuff into your brain that you don't need at all. And so mm -hmm. detoxing that stuff is huge. Is detoxing your nervous system will help you trust. Your nervous system will trust and regulate properly so you can actually dip low enough to dream. There's mm -hmm. also supplements like Blue Lotus and Mugwort. I have and, heard of 
heard, I have heard of that, the blue lotus. I haven't tried it. And also mugwort can help you with astral. Um, totally. Yeah. It's a great, it's great. I have it in my tea. It's, is a stinky, it's a valerian root is also, and they all kind of have their own little valerian stinks the most out of that group for sure. Uh, but I often get told usually the day of that there's a dream coming tonight that I need to pay attention to. And so I will withhold from cannabis as well. And that, cause that totally clicks you into a different channel. So you need to kind mm -hmm. of get back to more earth human boring, and then you can sip into your dream realm because you really have to slow your nervous system down and yeah. stimulants and plant medicines and stuff. They're making you go on journeys while you're awake. That's like awake dreaming. You know, your you, shamanism is awake dreaming in a way. And so you're kind of bridging those two worlds uh, with these medicines and so on, which we could go into, but really you don't, we're going to, you could also use the shamanism like we just talked about to sleep more using these shamanistic herbal remedies. Like those are some serious, some serious stuff. Blue Lotus is a big deal. These sort of things. So I'm going to get it. I just got some Blue Lotus chai little mix packet, almost like a hot chocolate packet from the store the other day, I was like, okay, they're starting to mixing, mixing it into these products a little bit. Oh, fun. So the dream, the dream realm is becoming more of a mature meetup spot. I've noticed for the developing soul, the developing spiritual person. Yeah. A lot of us are, a lot of people see people who make YouTube channels and put their faces out there, see these people in their dreams because You've now coded our face and our personality into your subconscious as a mirror for, mm -hmm. for your case and my case, usually for your divine feminine or your youthful divine feminine or your maiden archetype. And you begin, you can now use us and use our energy in your subconscious to kind of work through any sort of trauma you have with maidens in general and your own self-conscious issues with your mm -hmm. own divine feminine and so on. And so we'll pick all these different characters and emulate them in our subconscious to like grow as a person mm -hmm. and develop. And some people wonder, did I really see that person in my dream? Are we really having a shared experience? And most of the time it's not the case at all. But if you are close and you love each other, like you have a heart connection, like you and I have met in person, we technically have touched electromagnetic fields. So we have a heart <laughs> connection too. So I could have a dream of your life that's actually accurate because yeah. I'm connected to you in a real way. But people who see us online who've never physically hugged us, they don't have that same connection to us. So it's hard. So it's harder it's for them. Kind of like it'd be kind of like a random person. I have Alicia just said that I was in her dream. Like said, Laura had a dream or a vision of me um, before we met up last weekend as a blue ET with elf ears. I Cute. Think yeah, I was like, oh, with big gold earrings. And I was literally wearing big gold earrings. Um, That's beautiful. So, yeah. Good so choice. Like, yeah. <laughs> that goes well with blue. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so it's true. I've also heard. Things you are, you know, you're you're meeting with a, a another dimensional aspect um in some in some that it, it, that's a great i'm glad you brought that up honestly because that is another layer of it where i believe mm -hmm. people are accessing then the upper astral plane sort of area where we are having another dimensional version of ourselves and there is an actual floor where we're all running around up there also talking to each other and you can access that place awake or asleep you can access that area and talk to each other. That's the sort of telepathy space I've noticed too, potentially. But we look different in these areas a lot of the time too. And um, also memories, past life memories. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll see your face, and but they'll really see, oh, that was, I remember her, but she's she used to look like this. And their subconscious yeah. like goes, oh, they know you. Like I've had people do similar to myself. Yeah. And then some people well, with get, everything's going going on at the same time. It's all happening simultaneously. I was visited by a, a version of me from Atlanta. <laughs> In your own dream. It, 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 this was uh, through meditation. Oh, okay. Vision. Yeah. Psychic um, vision. But yeah, um, sometimes dreams too. But yeah, so there's, there's I think there's endless possibilities of what, um, you know, you can be contacted by different all of these different versions. Yes. And the contact then is another part of it where 
then there's this insertions into the dream, which is sort of why I'm tr I'm also trying to differentiate all this stuff in the <laughs> in the workshop. But all mm -hmm. these different little little misnomers that happen with dreams, which is such a broad space, but mm -hmm. the in interjections of and visitations are. I want to say one of the only places that we can get a little bit more of an access to those realms visually because mm -hmm. we're just there's so many different frequencies to live in out there and our eyes can only see so much of it so in the dream our pineal gland can kind of suss through it all it seems like it can mm -hmm. pretty much go through way more channels but that's why you clear that because then you can expand your your uh <laughs> you can expand Band how many channels you get on your TV, basically. Yeah. And these insertions are, are being used by those who studied psychology to the extreme levels back in world, before World War I and so on, with the dream realm and the psychology also, and insertions and how to visit people without dealing with their free will, like impeding their free will and all these spiritual laws can kind of get mixed around in the astral plane a little more, I feel like. Mm -hmm. So that's where a lot of those activities can happen. And if you don't have, I would say, a spiritual core, dreaming can be a terrifying experience, especially depending where you live. Because if you live on one of those areas where they're pulling energy down into the earth, like an underground civilization that's I don't know, <laughs> not the best or something because a lot of people are living on cities like that or have in the past and they have terrible nightmares and they don't know why. Wow. It's because there's literally people and stuff happening beneath your feet in the lower, lower consciousness tiers below your feet, like mm -hmm. hell realms even and below your feet and they're dragging, <laughs> dragging the astral or like the, even the Akashic field, like dragging it down and Mm -hmm. filling it with all this other crap that you don't relate to but you're just amongst it because you're right. just close by it's not so, even your stuff that you're experiencing. right it's so other. spiritual core is like that final push like you have mm -hmm. to have the inner buddha that knows that you right. are the light and you have every right to be here and travel and be untouchable mm -hmm. and omnipresently watched and loved and whatever and not a lot of kids learn that when they're mm -hmm. learning and getting to go to sleep and are even detaching from their parents and they have those moments of fear. And then who do you turn to? It's dark in the middle of the night and you've just had this experience and there's dissociation. And I think that's another reason why people don't dream is because they started having an unpleasant, unspiritual experience because they were not mm -hmm. vibrating in the right, in the mm -hmm. right place. But you can raise your vibration with music. You don't even have to worry. You can do it with chanting. It's really not that hard. You can do chanting. I used to pray as a child. I was raised Christian-ish. And so I would pray. I even learned that what side I would face when I was sleeping, I would pop into different like frequencies and different places. So I would, I forced myself to learn to sleep on my back, looking straight up at God is what I would say. And just, I would pray for my whole family that we would all be protected and dream mm -hmm. good. And uh, I'm glad I had that because mm -hmm. I think it helped a, a lot because I was obviously also getting, having moments. I learned sleeping on my right side not always the best you know <laughs> or my left towards the wall it was it would block and cause issues and turmoil so how you're sleeping when you're sleeping where you're sleeping what you're eating yeah i've heard the uh, direction that you're sleeping also um i sleep not the direction of the sunrise and sunset but oh. um i guess north north and south yes um that's, uh, I guess that goes naturally with the um, energy. So just to, we'll go ahead and start wrapping it up. So that's, okay. so this month was, you were talking about doing dreams in your guardian training. So that's what Alexa was just talking about, her guardian training. Um, do you want to tell people like where they can sure. find you a little bit more about uh, the guardian training or yes. all that fun stuff? I would love to have you on my patreon.com slash Ascension Diaries. That's where I do all of my my work with people now because I'm being mm -hmm. shadow banned from reaching my own audiences properly on the free platforms, which I would I was doing everything for free until 
it wasn't it wasn't helping my own audience. Mm -hmm. So I've now had to try and pull people into a space where I know I'm going to be able to contact them whenever mm -hmm. I need to. I send everybody the space weather explosions as mm -hmm. well. And then I invite on Instagram too, don't you? Oh yeah, all the time because yeah. it's the only spot I do get to meet new people because everywhere else it seems like the algorithms don't even push new people in my direction mm -hmm. at all, which is annoying, but it's going to change. Again, my guides and whatever were like, it'll all, it's all going to work out. Just keep going yeah. and make do as you go along and keep, mm -hmm. keep going because the sun's not going anywhere. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, sweet. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so patreon.com slash Ascension Diaries, go over there. It's currently, uh, the Guardian training is $40. So please just enter in $40 if you want to join. And mm -hmm. if you want to join at any other amount and you don't want to do the Guardian training call, that's open to your interpretation. You can fill in whatever amount you want and you'll get my newsletter whenever I need to. That offer is limited time for right now. I just felt the generous push yesterday to just take off my tears on Patreon, allow people to sign up for whatever amount mm -hmm. to bring more people in who are curious because I'm more interested in the curious masses than putting paywalls on things. And that's always mm -hmm. been my deal. And mm -hmm. again, age of Aquarius, it's just kind of like, let's do this. Like I'm, yeah. let's get this going. This is serious. And the training indeed is now my little extra piece that I get to add and Beautiful. grow for people because <laughs> it's hard to organize sometimes. I don't know about you, but I get a lot of different ideas and I try to work them all into my There's content. a lot of things that I want to do. Yeah, definitely. Right. <laughs> Too many. And organized and I've, I've, I've admired the way that you've been able to kind of be structured and, and pursue <laughs> into this and <laughs> It's been serving you. you very well and I love your channel and you. I hope that you begin doing some of those extra things that you've been getting ideas about and yeah. whatever it is. I really is. want to do a group. I really want to get some, do some group stuff. And yes. Like that. It's amazing. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. It's very rewarding. Mm -hmm. I so, want to start doing weekly soon, but monthly for yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Because guardians are busy. Kind of a lot. <laughs> yeah. Guardians are busy. Once yes. a month, I've just made it the 18th. So that's, yeah, that's awesome. It's easy for me. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so Alexis is Patreon and then on Instagram, she is Ascension Diaries. The The link for that is also in the description. And thank you, Kearns11, for the uh, super chat. I appreciate you. Everybody you hit the like button. Thank you, Laura. Um, and, and then if you guys want to check out Starseed Adventures, um, the Starseed Adventures conference awesome. December yeah. also beautiful <laughs> well thank you guys so much for hanging out thank you Alexis for coming on it was so wonderful speaking with you thank you for having me and also that CBD is made by the Sasquatch approved folk so it's good <laughs> stuff I'm friends with them as well so very good it's oh, wonderful well. stuff if you have any sort of chronic issues especially and you need some higher higher concentrations like extreme chronic pain they've personally uh, cured those things with their own product so they would yeah. love to talk to you all about it truly genuinely lovely people so yeah. excellent sponsor always always happy to hang out they saved my butt also at the conference when i had busted my face uh, right before we got there and they were like here you go alexis has some cbd and i was like Thank you, angels. My uh, cannabis angels are always around. It's wow. It's a part of my journey for sure as like a, a spiritual being for sure. And now we're moving into the psilocybin realm for the uh, serotonin help that's boosting. It seems like the mushroom realm wants to be more of the next stage, I would say. So I'd and say more legalizations and more things with that collective mm -hmm. and popularizing. I think that's going to be huge necessary to repair people's brains and stuff for this next few years and for contact and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Then like, yeah, they've sent me visions of the mushroom and, and actually some ETs. I don't want to get off on like a whole, whole, other I know. Thing, sorry. <laughs> some ETs did whenever I made contact with them, not too long. Like this was actually last year. They showed me mushrooms and they said that mushrooms and well, and CBD and things like that, but they specifically said mushrooms will be a very important piece of the awakening and healing so we have that to look forward to all right everybody thank you so much for hanging out um this sunday we'll have a live activation i'm not 100 sure what 
um, we're going to do it on yet, but that will be it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm it's going to be a mixed bag, it sounds like. Yeah, I'm thinking about having uh, Archangel Ariel and oh, the beautiful. Pleiadians there. Yeah, I just met Archangel Ariel for the first time yesterday. Her energy just, <laughs> just blew me away. That so, Well, maybe, I don't know, that might have something to do with our interview that we did today, just a little bit, because I definitely get the sim I've followed around that angel a little bit myself. Really? <laughs> yeah. oh it's my a God. great one. Okay, so... Yeah, there's a, there's a reason for it. No coincidence. She's been around me heavy the past um, couple of days, and she's amazing. So That's she's so here cool. right now. <laughs> archangels. Cool. I know. It's funny. You go into ET, but the archangels and stuff, that stuff comes through a lot, too. And even, like, the apostles and mm -hmm. these other spiritual beasts, but... That's, no, yeah. she was that's the fun of being a channeler, eh? Yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> I was blown away. So I may do Archangel Ariel this Sunday and possibly the Pleiadians or um, maybe the Andromedans, some kind of, of um, right. you know, my go-tos that are hanging out pretty often. And in the next week, we will have James Gilland from East City Ranch on. That will be next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central Time. That will be live. So... Yeah, thank you so much again, Alexis. Thank you all for being here. You guys enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you guys. If you haven't met me before, you're welcome to go check out my YouTube channel. Yeah. I'd love to have you. I do live streams and stuff and space weather and all the goodies. So, yeah. And yeah, we're going to have to do another collab so I can also bring my audience over to meet you some more. So yeah, thank you me. again for this. I'm going to I'm gonna share this to them and mm -hmm. we're going to spread the love. <laughs> Awesome. Beautiful. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Take care. Love you.